बारे में तो शी इज आसना चौधरी ऑल इंडिया रैंक 114 दिस ईयर राइट 116 दिस ईयर ऑफ कोर्स 116 दिस ईयर मैम को ऑप्शनल इज एंथ्रोपोलॉजी ऑप्शनल इंपॉर्टेंट बात वही कि इट वॉज हर थर्ड अटेम्प्ट इट वॉज हर थर्ड अटेम्प्ट और पहले दोनों अटेम्प्ट में शी कुड नॉट इवन क्लियर प्रिलिम्स ठीक है तो कई बार हमें लगता है कि भाई प्रिलिम्स क्लियर नहीं हो रहा दैट मीन्स वी आर नॉट केपेबल ऑफ क्वालिफाइंग द एग्जामिनेशन ऐसा होता नहीं है एट टाइम्स इट हैपन्स कि इवन इफ यू आर नॉट मेकिंग इट टू द फाइनल लिस्ट ऑफ मेन्स एग्जामिनेशन दैट डजन मीन यू आर नॉट कैपेबल इनफ टू क्वालिफाई द एग्जामिनेशन एंड गेट ए गुड रैंक ठीक है तो थर्ड अटेम्प्ट में शी कुड क्वालिफाई और अच्छी रैंक भी आती है अगेन बैकग्राउंड के बारे में अगर हम बात करें तो शी हैज डन हर ग्रेजुएशन फ्रॉम एल एस आर में मास्टर्स के लिए शी हैज चूजन साउथ एशियन यूनिवर्सिटी और उनका सब्जेक्ट था इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन नाउ मास्टर्स में जो सब्जेक्ट है यूजली यू वुड प्रिफर कि भाई उसी सब्जेक्ट से आप अपना ऑप्शनल भी लेके चलोगे बट हर ऑप्शनल इज एंथ्रोपोलॉजी ऑप्शनल तो आप डाइवर्स बैकग्राउंड देख रहे हैं ठीक है तो बहुत सारी ऐसी चीज़ें हैं जो मैम के बारे में वी विल गेट टू नो एक बार मैम को हम वेलकम करते हैं और फिर अपना सेशन स्टार्ट करते हैं तो जैसा कि बताया इंट्रैक्शन uh, में बहुत सारी चीज़ें हम सीखने वाले हैं 2024 के लिए स्ट्रैटेजीज जो भी होंगी मैम के आर्ट एंड कल्चर के नोट्स बहुत ज़्यादा डेप्थ है इन डेप्थ में उन्होंने बना करके उसे पढ़ाई की हुई है वी कैन आल्सो टेक ए ग्लिम्स ऑफ दैट उसके बारे में भी बात कर सकते हैं एट द सेम टाइम जो भी स्ट्रैटेजीज है उसके बारे में डिस्कशन करेंगे अगेन वी विल वेलकम मैम इन द क्लास प्लीज गिव ए राउंड ऑफ अप्लॉज Handing over the stage to Ashna, ma'am. Your all questions, please. Thank you, ma'am. Hi, everyone. This is Ashna. Um, I'm really sorry. It's a it's an early morning lecture, and I'm not exactly prepared in the way I should be. And so I'm Ashna Chaudhary. I've cleared the exam with rank one one six, UPSC CSE two thousand twenty two. And today I'm here talking about my strategy. And uh, here it's written that I'll give inputs for note making, newspaper reading, as well as the overall strategy that I have adopted. And I would like you to adopt. Uh, I would like you to benefit out of that as well. So do not do not follow my strategy blindly. I I'm saying that again. So uh, I uh, I did not follow any topper's strategy blindly. Rather, I made a conscious decision of what to pick on from whose strategy. So that is what I'm asking you to do as well. Uh, today I will be sharing my strategy. But uh, if you think it's for you, you can always follow that. But if you think it's not for you and you can't put in uh effort in exactly the same way that i have then you can also discard it all together so uh, very flexible that way um how are you all you're good all right so shall we start shall we begin all right okay so in the end i'll also open the forum for you to ask questions so you can also ask me questions or the doubts you have so i would try to uh answer all of them in as comprehensive a manner as i can so uh the the entire point of this discussion is for you to benefit out of it at any point if you feel you need me to slow down i'll slow down for you at any point you need uh, you want me to change the medium from english to hindi because i can only converse in these two languages so you can also ask me for that or from for uh, or from hindi to english uh as well so if i'm speaking continuously in hindi and you think that you are not able to get me so you can also ask me to shift my uh, media more all right so uh, uh i would say that uh, my talk would start from uh, from you uh, from guiding you to follow the syllabus so uh, the starting point of any preparation is to see where we are going and how do you know where exactly are you landing you know it via the syllabus so syllabus is your key to start your preparation and uh, syllabus reading is not like you've skimmed through the thing uh, once you need to repeatedly study it you need to repeatedly see what are the topics that you need to study 
how would you classify them so upsc gives a very broad syllabus it's a, it has got pointers it uh, talks about specific topics so it is a very 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 wide syllabus and there is a reason that they have given such a uh, uh, you the syllabus in such great depth uh, the reason being they really are giving you cues to direct your preparation when you say uh, upsc asks anything and everything under the sun it is not true you have a very well defined syllabus for the same however the syllabus is a little large and a little bulky so but how do you uh, how do you make that bulky syllabus light is the skill here and lies your skill so what do you do is you classify the syllabus according to the way you understand it right so for instance uh, there's a uh, indian economy so gs paper 3 there's a subject called indian economy and how do you study indian economy there are concepts that are mentioned and it becomes very much like there are a lot of concepts that are mentioned there so how do you understand that how how will you be able to remember all those concepts how would you be able to remember the syllabus altogether and till the time you cannot remember the syllabus how will you be able to begin your preparation so how do you uh, how do you actually uh, understand or remember the syllabus indian economy you take that you divide it into four pillars uh, one being the fiscal uh, one being the fiscal pillar of it and when you talk about fiscal you talk about all the government policies all the government related aspects in that monetary mo when you talk about monetary all rbi related or banks related thing fall into that one category then you move on to infrastructure related so your roads railways ports shipping everything comes under the infrastructure related aspect then you talk about the development aspect all the problems related to unemployment poverty uh, 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 labor force uh, uh, poor participation of women in the labor force everything comes under the development aspect so what have you done is you have taken eco indian economy you have understood what are the topics in indian economy found out broad themes for the same classified all the topics that are given under these four broad themes so that is how you remember your syllabus now you know that under indian economy we are doing we are covering four aspects four broad aspects and within those four broad aspects these are the these are the concepts that we would be uh, looking at so that is the skill that is how you are able to remember your syllabus that is how you are able to streamline your preparation as well so this uh, exam i would say is more about streamlining your preparation so there is so much to learn there is so much to study but being humans we have our limitations so what we do is we take those things up we classify them we uh, try to simplify those things and then study them so simplification is the key and you might be at there would be a point you might be thinking that i am doing the bare minimum but that bare minimum is all that is needed for the exam you do not need to know everything you do not need to follow multiple sources for the same paper for instance uh, modern india my first year of preparation i i had a very deep interest in history so i knew that modern india is my kind of thing and i'll read each and everything that there is for modern india i'll read spectrum i'll read ncrts i'll read uh, you know the other material that is available so i'll also see up materials online do online coaching uh, watch youtube videos i wanted to do each and everything cover each and every aspect but that is only going to slow you down so what is the bare minimum that you need you need to pick up your spectrum do it cover by cover and that is enough till uh, till the time where post independence portion starts you can leave post independence altogether for prelims because there are no questions from post independence and prelims and in mains also you get one or two questions and for that i think you can follow uh, maybe a youtube video on the same a uh, crash course video sort of a thing wherein they cover uh, post independence in like 3 hours so that is called smart work so you already know you have previous year questions you have papers so you know which are the important domains and wherein you need to give more more devote more of your time and which which are the ones that you can easily just summarize and cover in like 3 4 hours and uh, so that is also the key 
post independence and uh, world history are those domains wherein you do not need to put in much efforts because they are not at all asked for prelims and for mains as well you will find one or two questions not more than that so that you can safely uh, leave behind for you to uh, pursue after your prelims and uh, even after prelims i would suggest that you do not devote much of your time to these two uh, domains so uh, yes so these are the things that i needed to begin with syllabus reading was one of them and identifying your sources was another and then uh, smart work in terms of uh, deciding how much time you need to give to your preparation of that particular subject now talking about the syllabus so i'll i'll use syllabus as the key so i would try to make you understand the strategy that i followed through the syllabus itself so because i said syllabus is the starting point so we need a starting point and from there we can all uh, go in depth so talking about the syllabus of upsc you all begin with uh, essays right so essays are the uh, i'll begin with essays so there are two essays that are asked in the paper uh you have to write two essays in 3 hours so 1.5 hours devoted to each essay roughly so here in uh you have to write about uh, 1200 words you have to write about 1200 words for each essay and what students do wrong here is that they this set one structure for their essay and they follow the same structure for both the essays now keep in mind that you have the same examiner you have one examiner checking both the essays and do you think he wouldn't find it repetitive so what i did for my essays was i set two different structures for my essays one for the previous essay and one for the other one so when i wrote, when i wrote my essays with a different structure i was making sure that the that the examiner is intrigued he is involved in the process of reading and he finds the reading very fascinating so that is the trick that i uh, took for essays and the uh, the matter of essays always comes from your other gs papers so when you are done with your history you take examples from history for your essay writing you take polity you take uh, so various domains but all of them comes from gs 1 2 3 4 so in essays you are reading uh, uh, your uh, the time that you need to give for uh, for the preparation of the matter would be less because that would be covered in your other papers but the time that you need to figure out for your uh, structure would be more and for the practice would be more uh, i ended up scoring 125 in my essay so 120 plus was my target which was very well reached by this strategy uh, next i would like to move towards gs1 So GS one comprises of three subjects. It uh, includes history, the various branches of history. Then it includes geography, the various branches again, and there is society. Uh, talking about history, history is divided into uh, for uh, for the means perspective. History is divided into uh, ancient, modern, uh, ancient, medieval, modern, art and culture, world history, and post independence. These are the six domains that history is divided into. so uh safely i have already told you you can leave behind modern and uh, you can leave behind world history and post independence history for the for the prelims perspective and you can only pursue them for the mains uh but the the rest is very important from the prelims perspective as well so you should uh, have your uh, small notes regarding the facts ready for uh, you need to derive them out and uh, you need to prepare that for prelims perspective as well now what i did in this case was i divided uh, my uh, read uh, first of all i identified the temporal scheme that runs into history so i identified that ancient history comes first medieval and then modern india now uh, art and culture i would take simultaneously with all of these streams so i would take art and culture for ancient art and culture for medieval and art and culture for modern india as well so that would go simultaneously with my temporal setting of ancient medieval and uh, modern now uh, talking about uh, then i would divide them further uh, ancient india i would make uh, i would see that it starts from paleolithic 
then it goes on towards paleolithic mesolithic chalcolithic ne neolithic and then it moves on to harappan civilization then the vedic period comes in so that's how i figure out my timeline within ancient india and when i am done with that i am done with understanding how it is set so the content reading the reading of the contents table of contents page become very important for you to figure that out so when you are able to understand how history progresses when you have set a timeline for the same after that you move into the contents within the history so what i am suggesting here is that you always prepare a broad structure and after having prepared that broad structure then only you delve deeper into the subject now my structure according to the temporal scale is ready now i know what exactly am i going to uh, study in history and what would be my approach so temporal approach is what i am taking but i would not be limited by temporal approach because then i would have to read each and everything about history uh, that took place in that particular period so what i will do here is i would further take a thematic approach and fuse it with the temporal approach so how would i do that pick up each and every period divide it further into five themes so these can be political administrative uh, art and culture is one very important diverse theme that i have talked to you about which uh, itself forms another major pillar of the syllabus so art and culture would be one then i would uh, make a point saying important uh, persons during the time and then i would write the miscellaneous aspects so the miscellaneous aspect becomes the bedrock for your prelims so now you have divided each and every period that you are studying in history into five themes one political administrative economic art and culture important persons and miscellaneous so in the miscellaneous i would highly suggest that you write in pointers the factual information and pointers that will help you do, during your prelims so for mains as well you have your answer ready miscellaneous component would not feature in your mains preparation because that was prelim specific and all other five themes would be would form a part of your answer so whatever question comes from history art and culture from wherever you would have your five points ready and in the same manner you would write your answer so at least you have five points in hand and if you uh, if you get reminded of another point then you can write as it has a sixth point in your exam and then add on to your points right so in this way you are actually streamlining your preparation you have taken a temporal approach you have taken a thematic approach the approach does not differ does not differ for any specific period right so for instance harappa uthaya aapne harappa mein aapne ye panch cheeze cover ki now you know ki uh, now that i have covered all these five themes in harappa how it progresses after harappa you'll get vedic period so harappa may if in art and culture you are doing pottery so pottery during the harappan civilization was red and black ware then it progresses in the vedic period it goes on to becoming painted gray ware after that post vedic period it becomes northern black polished ware so you actually see how pottery is uh, progressing from being a crude pottery to being extremely specialized form of craft so that that in a in a spur comes to you that okay if the timeline is progressing the specialization will also progress initially you had tribes then there were chieftains and then came your uh, uh, standing armies in the political domain so politically the thing is progressing temporally the thing is progressing then politically also the theme will progress and you are actually able to see these glaring shifts then and when you are able to see this you are actually able to understand the subject in a much more better manner so that is what i uh, that is how i approached history followed by history you have geography so geography again is divided into uh, uh, geography you have for prelims perspective you have places and news so current affairs become your starting point here then there is uh, indian geography you have physical geography then you have uh, locational factors so various industries where are they located these are the aspects that you study in geography mostly then you have biomes the study of biomes as well so for physical geography the book that i referred to was gc leong 
a lot of people uh, refer ncrds of class 11 as well but i i did not do that because i wanted to uh, i wanted to cover biomes very well and uh, they are comprehensively covered in gc leong and that's why i picked gc leong but you can also pick up ncrds if you want now talking about the physical geography uh, part of it i've already told you that i picked up gc leong and try to cover that from there uh indian geography i picked up uh ncrt of class 12th and that covers indian geography pretty well and for locational factors i always type that on youtube so you can always type on youtube for instance where are iron and steel industries located and you'll find an entire lecture on it from some coaching institute so that's how you can prepare for the locational factors so this is how i prepared my geography again i made sure that i only have five points at my hand if it is locational factors my points would be raw material power uh, then uh, availability of labor availability of water in that manner i would identify i would and then there would be one specific point that would form the first point of my answer so if it is iron and steel industry i would uh, identify availability of coal fields because coal is used in the in the process of uh, uh, iron and steel manufacturing so i would write that in the first so specific factor followed by the four factors which are already prepared availability of raw material so iron mines jahan par honge wahan par iron and steel industry hogi then another one would be availability of water water to har industry mein jata hai so that is a very general point koi bhi locational factors a question aaye ek question hoga ya do question honge then you have your points ready you know that locational factors mein kuch bhi aayega these are the five points that we are going to write so that's how i divided again my geography and then we move on to society society ka there is this great very very good source so uh, for instance there is a uh, for instance these uh, open universities sometimes th there the professor is taking the entire lecture so you are getting into a domain wherein you are getting access to the masters level of society so what you do is you see your syllabus you see the topics identify the topics from your syllabus which are very clearly explicitly mentioned for instance there is written regionalism now you need to cover regionalism what you do is you go to youtube uh, you'll be able to make uh, notes in like 2 to 3 days you'll be able to do the entire thing so you are actually able to cover one subject in 2 to 3 days with your notes not even being bulky so you'll be able to cover it entirely into 50 51 pages and how much is a book the book comprises of uh, at least 200 250 pages and now you have 50 51 pages which have been written by you only so it becomes very easy for you to refer to them and uh, pursue them for means again for prelims society is not very important all you can do is go through some monthly magazines see what are the new, uh, what are the things in news from the society perspective and that only becomes important so current affairs is the only bedrock for uh, prelims when it comes to society next would be gs2 so talking about gs2 we divided into polity governance uh, international relations and social issues social issues again you will do the same thing you will identify each and every issue to refer to them later on and then talking about polity lakshmikant is the book and uh, that should be read i mean lakshmikant i remember before sitting for the exam this year prelims i read lakshmikant 12 times and i knew if there is a question from polity i am not missing it so lakshmikant becomes very important that way and when you are writing your answers in the mains uh, you can also take help from some recommendations of various committees for instance arc to report do not read them entirely take them up for a topic for instance you are covering a topic on uh, anti defection law so what are the recommendations for changes in 10th schedule which is on anti defection law so what are the recommendations you pick up your arc2 identify five points of recommendation and that only becomes your thing you do not need to go back to your arc2 uh, again and again and you do not need to read that entire thing as well there are summaries that are available in the market you can also buy them so that reduces your workload anyway anti defection law so you'll know what will be your beginning from lakshmikant whatever article it is whatever schedule it is when was it inserted 1985 it was inserted you'll uh, you'll write an introduction based on that after that you'll know why was it introduced five points again 
वॉट आर दी एडवांटेजेस ऑफ एंटी डिफेक्शन लॉ वॉट आर दी चैलेंजेस विद एंटी डिफेक्शन लॉ सब में पांच पांच पॉइंट एंड देन अ कंक्लूजन दैट इज ऑल यू नीड टू डू फ्रॉम द मीन्स पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एंड फॉर प्रिलिम्स पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू आई थिंक लक्ष्मीकांत इज गुड इनफ लक्ष्मीकांत एंड देन यू कैन प्रैक्टिस सब्सिक्वेंटली फ्रॉम वेरियस प्रैक्टिस पेपर्स एंड आइडेंटिफाई हाउ यू आर गोइंग थ्रू After that governance, so governance for prelims point of view, uh, various indices and reports you can pick up. Uh, these reports come from current affairs, so whatever is in news, these reports you pick up. Who is it published by? What are the major components that becomes important from prelims point of view? Then there is, um, so that's how you make uh, notes for governance. Five five points. Do not. do not go deeper that we need to cover all the points because they'll give you 11 12 points you have uh, heard five points you have made five points fast forward then uh, coming to international relations so international relations ministry of external affairs website very very good uh, you can get all the bilateral things from there and then the miscellaneous concept for instance something is in news uh, like russia ukraine war or the uh, Russia Ukraine war or the Myanmar coup that you can cover from your current affairs you can cover it from any other monthly magazine so that would be uh, for current affairs that would be the source for international relations and otherwise for uh, uh, otherwise for the bilateral relations you can always refer ministry of external affairs website again you will follow a thematic approach for the same so the thematic approach goes like what are the political relations what are the energy relations what are the security relations what are the uh bilateral meetings that they are a part of what are the international organizations that these countries form a part of uh, so these become your five domains any five themes you choose for yourself what are the economic relations do we have a trade deficit do we have a trade surplus broadly trends would work as well so uh this is how you do your international relations after that you move on to social issues then we move on to the third one which is gs3 gs3 comprises of your economics uh for indian economy which is called and then you have environment and ecology disaster management uh then there is um internal security and uh internal security disaster management environment and ecology indian economy yeah these are the these are the broad things that you cover in gs3 or am i missing out something science and tech science and tech all right so these are the broad domains that you cover in gs3 and then talking about gs3 indian economy i've already told you how you divide it so for instance national infrastructure pipeline 2019 was very much in news because it featured in the budget so i knew there would be a question from infrastructure and there was a question from infrastructure so that becomes important right so that's how you can actually uh preempt the questions that these are the questions that might feature in this year's paper based on your study of economic survey and budget and you pick up themes from there and you uh, you prepare these things uh, themes from elsewhere the your sources can be newspapers for that or uh, some other notes that you have found somewhere so it could be anything like google them the problem of unemployment in india google that identify five causes causes of unemployment then types of unemployment then you move on to uh how can the situation be tackled five points for each make it very simple very very simple you do not need to do a phd on the subject you need to write a workable answer on the same so th that's how you prepare your indian economy i have already told the four broad themes that i divided it into uh fiscal monetary uh development infrastructure what you do is for the mains perspective do mains 365 or uh, your monthly whatever your monthly material is do that revise that that becomes very important there or uh, so current affairs is the major key for environment and ecology but you would you won't be able to understand current affairs until you have read some basic books on the same for instance uh there are various protocols that have been signed that there is montreal protocol and uh, various other things vienna convention how do you get to know them you get to know them through your books right no newspaper would cover them because they are from the back date so that's why the uh, reading of a uh, of a static book becomes very important but the questions are mostly from the current affairs part so current affairs also become very important from environment and ecology view point and then you have uh, for prelims you need to cover current affairs do not uh, 
do not be disheartened that i'm saying current affairs current affairs current affairs and then i'm not telling you how to read them and from where to read them because i will cover that separately after this after this you move on to disaster management disaster management ndma guidelines national disaster management authority again you uh, identify your uh, three broad uh, ways you uh, the the way you'll write your answer it will progress in a manner wherein you have three points what should be done before disaster what should be done after uh, during disaster and what should be done after disaster uh teen char points for all of them good enough from ndma guidelines and then you move on to so disaster management wouldn't take much of your time like 2 2.5 days and you are done with your disaster management again for the for the mains perspective only and then you have science and tech science and tech is entirely current oriented so mains 365 good enough uske alawa kuch mat karo then after that you have uh, internal security internal security uh, take any coaching material for that and uh, you have actually seen that cyber security has been there in all the in all uh, all the exams after 2013 from 2013 till 2021 every year a question has been asked on cyber security so it becomes very important then uh, border security is very important when you are talking about internal security so these either you can do one thing you can i uh, you can see the various uh, various themes that are given in your syllabus and google them and then uh, prepare them online or you can refer to any coaching material it wouldn't be very bulky internal security it's generally uh, chota only so you'll be able to do that so internal security is covered that way and then now we come to gs4 which is ethics it comprises of three parts one the theoretical part two the examples which you need to couple with the theoretical part and then third is the case study uh i need to pick up uh, an example of integrity i would see uh, jo local domain mein news aati hai whatever the local collector has done or what what is the initiative that has taken for example in gurgaon or the sanitation drive that has been taken in indore so these became my examples uh all of them from newspaper then you uh then we talk about the case studies so if we talk about the case studies you can always refer to topers copies for that see how they progress when it comes to case studies i had a set pattern so i would always begin with addressing the theme for instance there is a case study wherein a child is being uh is forced into marriage by her parents then i would write uh, the issue of child marriage has been featured in this case study and then a uh, cup couple that with a data on child marriage which you have already done as part of your gs2 which is social issues so social issues you would have covered the theme of child marriage pick up a data from there and that that becomes your starting point that becomes your introduction then even if it is not asked i would always make a diagram on key stakeholders i would identify key stakeholders how much does it take you it takes you hardly one minute but your space becomes but you are able to cover uh, a lot of space because one you have made a diagram two you have addressed something which is not asked in the question so you have ample uh, space has been covered by you case study you get four four to five pages to write and so it is always better that you are able to uh, cover the entire uh, space so my strategy has been i wouldn't leave even this much point in the paper for the examiner to a uh, point ki okay she left this much space or wasted this much space i would always cover that up with certain diagrams or something so then make a key stakeholders diagram and then progress with the questions that have been asked in the case study so if there are three questions asked you can write five five points each for those three questions uh, and then conclude later on and if there are five questions asked i would advise that write four four points each so it all depends on how many questions are asked in the case study and you can always refer to toppers copies on my telegram channel i have uploaded my uh, ethics uh, answer copy so you can always go through that as well to see how uh, you need to write answers for case studies after ethics so we have covered sc gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 then comes optional uh i had anthropology as my optional so how many people uh, have taken up this uh, the same subject okay there are a, uh, there are a few so do you want me to brief you about anthropology and the sources that i refer to as well or i can you need to 
all right so i'll i'll uh, i'll give a very brief account of the sources that i refer to for anthropology uh, anthropology again is divided into two parts paper 1 and paper 2 when you talk about paper 1 this is the foundation of anthropology and paper 2 is anthropology from the indian perspective so when you talk about the foundation of anthropology you divide it into a uh, theme such as introduction becomes first theme then you move on to socio cultural anthropology then you move on to physical anthropology and then archaeology so these are the four themes that you divide your paper 1 into when you talk about introduction it is unit 1 to uh, unit 1.1 1.2 1.3 1 and then unit 8 which is research methods all of this becomes part of introduction i would very much emphasize so what a lot of people do is they tend to ignore this section they say okay it's just an introduction to the subject and we do not need to do it much more deeper but i i would emphasize the importance of it because if you are able to get a question from there if you have done that section pretty well you would not miss it so we got a 20 marker this time from here and i was able to write it pretty well so that becomes the importance of this aspect and if you have done this aspect you would be able to understand the subject much better that is another added advantage so i would emphasize that you begin with introduction move on to socio cultural anthropology when we talk about socio cultural anthropology i think the the units are uh, unit 2 unit 3 unit 4 unit 5 and unit 6 is anthropological theories which i club together with my socio cultural anthropology so for socio cultural anthropology the book that i referred to was in search for arsas by wade sir that was the book that i referred to and uh, for anthropological theories akshar jain sir's uh, anthropology demystified uh that is good enough for anthropological theories anthropological theories are one domain you cannot miss because you would not be able to understand anthropology if you haven't done anthropological theories what i would do is i would always after introduction i would move on to anthropological theories directly so 1.1 1.2 1.3 uh unit 8 and then unit 6 and after that 2 3 4 5 so that's how i uh, did how uh, that's how i classified my preparation of anthropology after that uh, there is uh, physical anthropology the book that i referred to was pinath and certain uh, after that you move on to paper 2 paper 2 i used to start with archaeology indian archaeology so what i did was i combined the study of archaeology in paper 1 and archaeology in paper 2 so my paper 1 would always have examples from paper 2 in terms of archaeology section and my paper 2 would always uh, borrow from paper 1 in terms of archaeology section so that is also what uh, you can do you can always integrate your preparation so that you are better able to write answers so this was my flow for uh, anthropology worked for me i was able to score my target was 250 plus i was able to score 285 worked well for me so this was anthropology and so now i have covered almost each and every domain that is specified in the syllabus and would move forward from here so are there any questions from this much if or should i take them in the end all right i'll take questions in the end itself i would flow uh, go with the flow of the uh, of the lecture note making then we move on to note making so this becomes very important i did not make notes for the static parts only a few all right so uh so we move on to note making this becomes very important i have already told you about uh, the notes that i made for static portion so uh, not not much for instance for history i did not make any notes i just divided my themes from the static material that i was following a modern india is so bulky you do not make uh, need to make notes out of that right you have summary at the end which is already so the note making has been done in the spectrum already in the end you find summary which is like this much after the after every uh, after every chapter what you need to do is look at that summary write examples and note making is done examples from the chapter note making is done why do you need to uh, complicate the process and you know keep registers and registers you don't need that so static portion you need to be very smart if you don't need to make notes don't make them but for current i really did uh, note making in a very comprehensive manner because 
first two attempts i was not able to clear prelims and after assessing myself i realized that the, the current affairs the question from current affairs are the major roadblock which i am not able to uh, go through so what i did was i decided that current affairs i would uh, cover comprehensively and uh, thus i had four sources for my current affairs every day i would read newspaper whatever point factual point i could derive from the newspaper i would write that for instance and classify as well so for instance i had my registers history geography uh, society polity governance social issues ir in this manner so for instance uh, um uh, what came in the newspaper is russia ukraine war now i know it falls under the domain of international relations i'll write point 1 russia ukraine war a few factual information that i can collect from there so for instance uh, there is one region which is named so what i'll do is write the name of the region write uh, where it is from and why is it in news so this is like in one or two lines i was able to concise that note and if anything else i found about russia ukraine war i'd put a colon and mention it in the same point so that's how what uh, that's how i divided my uh, current affairs notes according to the various uh, subjects that are mentioned in the syllabus and then and then also uh, making it extremely short for me to refer for prelims point of view so that's how i did my note making from newspaper i would take newspaper see whatever is in news for instance if national monetization pipeline is in news which subject will it go to economy indian economy indian economy point number 1 national monetization pipeline uh six allocation 6 lakh crores colon next i would write uh monetization of existing assets so by this i know there is no creation of new assets and there is only monetization of the existing assets and that is all i need to know about national monetization pipeline i would not go into the nitty gritties advantages disadvantages because that would be covered in the current affairs magazine and i will take five points from there while i'm doing my mains preparation so why to complicate the process so that's how i used to make notes out of out of the newspaper mainly prelims point of view then after newspaper my second source for current affairs it was uh, it was the daily portal so you can uh, subscribe to a daily portal of any coaching so you get 10 news items uh, every day on that portal around 10 or less so 10 news items would take you newspaper reading took me 40 minutes roughly good enough then 10 minutes would be those 10 news items one minute for each news item if you have read the news already in your newspaper skip it if there is something for instance you read uh, the hindu but there is some news in the indian express which is really important that portal will cover that news so that news you can take from there again in your points one one point you have written from the newspaper point number 2 whatever news you get from there that becomes again factual very short then my third uh, so newspaper uh, coaching portal these were the two current affairs sources that i refer to then there was another one so uh, the coachings only the different coachings they offer you daily quizzes on daily current affairs so take any one of those quizzes and what you do is you uh, see again try to answer that and the questions that you've already covered in the previous two sources this is the daily thing that i'm doing if you have covered in the previous two sources already then you need you can skip that but if you find a new point then point number 3 and this becomes a new point for me and later on when you revise you do not need to see your newspaper you do not need to see your port portal you do not need to see the test that you have taken all you have to see are the points that you have made in your register which are also covered subject wise so that is how note making used to go for me in terms of current affairs and then for after that whenever the monthly magazine would come i would again see if there is something new which i haven't already mentioned in my notes right so that's how you make you do your note making exercise from the prelims point of view for current affairs which uh, and most of the subjects so prelims we have seen has become very current oriented so most of the subject would have questions from current affairs that is something that you cannot miss at all so uh, that is how uh, my note making went 
talking about newspaper reading i have mostly covered it in the note making section itself so read the newspaper whatever do not read uh, do not read the local news i mean do not say read something that uh, this mla has attended this event that is not very uh, pertinent from the point of view of the upsc exam so what you need to identify are the themes national and international themes that are important for instance manipur violence is a news so manipur violence is a very important theme and that's why, and so what you can do is you can see manipur violence you can put it into two uh, two domains you can put it into the geography domain wherein manipur and its geography becomes important where is it situated what is the geography of northeast in particular what are the uh, and then you can move on to the social issues uh, so social issues or society part and you can write what what is the composition the ethnic composition of uh, manipur and why is the violence happening so that becomes part of your regionalism as well so that's how you do it uh, that's how you do your newspaper reading and by this you are also able to identify the themes which are important manipur violence regionalism becomes important which is a part of your gs2 then upsc csc 2024 strategy this is what i've been broadly talking about so upsc csc 2024 strategy make sure you have an integrated approach so prelims is not just limited to prelims mains is not just limited to mains and interview is a is a combined factor that would uh, see how much you have prepared during your prelims during your mains and how uh, how well you are able to form opinions about the same so this would be an integrated approach rather than an approach in silos wherein you are treated each element differently then um, stress management becomes very important for your uh, preparation because it is a very lengthy process and you are bound to get exhausted that is very normal everyone gets exhausted so take breaks take breaks focus on your physical health try to you know exercise regularly food that you are eating try to uh, you know regulate that and uh, so on so that becomes very important if you like doing for instance i really like doing yoga so every day 6 to 7 was the time i would devote to my cardio and yoga so you can always take out time for that it does not mean that you need to work for like 12 hours a day it's no, no hard and fast rule that should be followed anyhow so that is there uh, stress management integrated approach focus on current affairs i've already told you how to read current affairs so focus on current affairs then you have um practice practice is a very 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 important component you need to practice thoroughly you cannot sit in an exam or you cannot go to the exam room without practicing because it is very uh, very difficult to answer questions so if you have acquired all the knowledge but how will you get how will you get used to the to, to the elimination technique if you haven't practiced enough right so practice becomes very important in that aspect and when you practice enough you'll also be able to see that you are actually able to answer questions that you know nothing about so there would be an intuition factor that would be added and that only comes from practice my first attempt i did not practice sat for the exam straight could not even read 100 questions panicked first 10 questions didn't know what to write in that panicked realize that the polity which is my core area wherein i was very sure that i would be able to attempt were the last 25 questions but i could not reach the last 25 questions i could only cover the first 70 questions why because i got very nervous and that happened because i did not practice so my core areas 25 questions that i could have attempted i could not even reach there because i did not practice and in the real exam i panicked so this really happens in the real exam so i would highly suggest that you start practicing so this time when i sat for the prelims previous two attempts i could not clear prelims this time when i sat for the prelims i sat after uh practicing like 100 uh test papers and i could clear prelims by a good margin of 30 35 marks which is very very much so not like 2 to 2 and a half marks i cleared prelims i cleared prelims the cut off was 88 and i think i scored 124 or 125 so you can make this stark difference if you practice revision is the key 
do not only focus do not uh, you know overestimate your capabilities i did that i thought okay i've read it once i would remember it i have a very good memory i would be able to remember it but what happened no i was not so uh, do not overestimate yourself uh, practice even if it gets boring after a point ki theek hai char bar pad liye ye book ab kitni baar padhu padho mar rahe ho pad lo koi nahi that is important so uh, practice and revision becomes important so here uh, integrated approach practice revision stress management these are the key pointers that i would like to talk about and uh, optional is very optional and eth optional ethics and essay these are the determining factors these should be very strong when you sit for the exam gs1 gs2 gs3 almost all, everyone will write a uh, similar answer so you would see there is not a variation in marks in these subjects but the variation occurs because of essay because of uh, your ethics and because of your uh, optional and if you haven't uh, if you aren't rigorous in your optional preparation i would suggest that you take some time off and start with that because optional is the key if you you have like 500 mark paper in your hand which is optional so optional is the key you need to be thorough with it and with optional the examiner examiner also because it is explicitly mentioned that the questions will be from the masters level masters is a professional degree so what they are expecting you is to be an expert in that subject so your depth will also be very much so in gs 1 2 3 4 you can actually touch the uh, touch the components by surface for instance you are writing regionalism i said five point likh do bas khatam hai but that would not work for your uh, optional optional ke liye aap surface points nahi likh sakte hain you would need to explain that i never made diagrams or schematics for any other paper other than ethics case studies because i thought this slow me down so i did not make diagrams for any of them but when it came to anthropology i knew i have to make them because i have to make the examiner understand that i have a thorough knowledge of the subject when i have taken a subject which asked me question from the masters level my answers are also expected from masters level so you need to put in great efforts when it comes to your optional so this is all i wanted to talk about i think it was uh, comprehensive enough good enough i try to cover each and every aspect that came to my mind and if i have missed anything you can always point it out uh now i open the forum for question and answer so you can all ask your questions and i would try to answer them anything you want to ask you can ask uh good morning ma'am मैम right. yeah. जैसे कि हम सब लोग ने सुना है कि टॉपर्स बताते हैं कि देवर नोइंग कि एक हफ्ते में उनको क्या कवर करना है एक महीने में और अगले छः महीने में वो क्या कवर करेंगे सर मैम तो ये टाइमलाइन नहीं बन पा रही है कि करना क्या है और डे डे से शुरुआत होती है तो यही नहीं पता चल पाता है कि आज क्या करना है दो दिन बाद क्या करना है एक हफ्ते बाद और दो हफ्ते बाद और एक महीने बाद क्या करना है तो मैम अगर ये टाइम मिल जाएगी तो जैसे स्कूल में हम लोग पढ़ते थे कि कितना कम्प्लीट करना है कितने वक्त में ताकि प्रॉपर प्रैक्टिस भी कर सकते तो मैम उसके लिए कुछ सजेस्ट करेंगे बिल्कुल Uh, तो मैं जो करती थी मैं एक साइक्लिक पैटर्न में पढ़ाई करती थी अब uh, uh, मैं शुरुआत करूंगी जी एस वन से जी एस वन का पहला सब्जेक्ट उठाऊंगी हिस्ट्री उठाऊंगी हिस्ट्री का एंशंट मिडीवल मॉडर्न करूंगी वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री ऑफ पोस्ट इंडिपेंडेंस मैंने बाद में कर लिया था आर्ट एंड कल्चर भी इन्हीं के साथ कवर हो जाएगा तो वो मैं उठाऊंगी पहले उसको करूँगी पूरा कितना भी टाइम लगे उसके बाद आई पिक वन एस्पेक्ट ऑफ माय ऑप्शनल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी है आई पिक इंट्रोडक्शन इंट्रोडक्शन में मेरे चार यूनिट्स कवर हो रहे हैं वो चार यूनिट्स करूंगी देन मूव ऑन टू जीएस टू जी एस टू कवर करूंगी देन एंथ्रोपोलॉजी का सेकंड टॉपिक सोशो कल्चरल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी वो कवर करूंगी देन कम बैक टू जी एस थ्री जी एस थ्री देन एंथ्रोपोलॉजी फिजिकल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी जी एस फोर आर्कियोलॉजी पेपर वन एंथ्रोपोलॉजी हो गया चारों जीएस कवर हो गए प्रिलिम्स और मेंस पर पर्सपेक्टिव दोनों से उसके बाद पेपर टू ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी यू आर ओनली कवरिंग आर्कियोलॉजी जो पेपर वन का था वो आप पेपर टू का था वो आप पेपर वन की आर्कियोलॉजी के साथ खत्म कर लेंगे नाउ यू हैव ओनली इंडियन एंथ्रोपोलॉजी एंड ट्राइबल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग नॉट डिफिकल्ट वॉट यू डू इज सेट बैक कंप्लीट देन मूव ऑन टू द रिविजन साइकिल अगेन इन द सेम मैनर 
प्रिलिम्स थे दो महीने पहले ऑप्शनल बंद मीन्स की आज आपके पास बुक आई है मीन्स की नहीं जैसा आपके पास करंट अफेयर्स के मंथली बुकलेट आ जाइए तो जून की है जून की रिवाइज कर लिया आपने आज दो दिन में नेक्स्ट जुलाई की आएगी जब जुलाई की रिवाइज करेंगे तो जून की भी साथ में रिवाइज कर लेंगे फिर अगस्त की आएगी जून जुलाई अगस्त तीनों रिवाइज कर लेंगे तो साइकिल में बार बार रिवाइज हो रहा है वो राइट तो जून का जब आप एग्जाम देंगे आप ग्यारह बार रिवाइज कर चुके होंगे जुलाई का आप दस बार रिवाइज कर चुके होंगे ऑगस्ट नौ बार कर चुके होंगे तो दैट्स हाउ यू डू इट और राइट या या सो बेसिकली योर द टाइम दैट यू टेक टू कवर अ सब्जेक्ट इनिशियली विल बी मोर इनिशियली हो सकता है कि आप स्पेक्ट्रम uh, पढ़ रहे हैं आपकी स्पेक्ट्रम ही खत्म नहीं हो रही है आपने 20 दिन हो गए हैं आप कह रहे हैं मैं स्पेक्ट्रम ही लेकर हूँ और सब्जेक्ट भी है मुझे करने ये खत्म नहीं हो रही है एंड लेटर ऑन आपका जब दसवा रिविजन है आप स्पेक्ट्रम कवर कर रहे हो दस घंटे में खत्म जो आपको स्टार्टिंग में बीस दिन लग रहे थे तो पहले आप पूरा एक बार सिलेबस कंप्लीट कीजिए वही स्केल अपनाइए हर चीज को कैटेगराइज क्लासिफाई कर कर कीजिए अगर आप वो करेंगे तो आपको इजी पड़ेगा फिर जब आपका एक बार हो जाए आपको एक सरफेस नॉलेज हो जाए सब्जेक्ट की फिर आप अपना रिवीजन प्लान कीजिए एक बार पूरा कर कर फिर एक बार पूरा रिवाइज करेंगे फिर जब आपको खुद पता चलेगा कि आपका सिग्निफिकेंटली दो या तीन दिन कम हो गए हैं इस रिविजन में तीसरा रिवीजन जब आप सारे उसका दोबारा करेंगे ये साइक्लिक पैटर्न ही अपना ये तब आपको लगेगा कि हाँ और पांच दिन कम हो गए तो दैट्स हाउ यूल कम टू अ पॉइंट वेर एन यू आर एबल टू रिवाइज अ सब्जेक्ट इन जस्ट वन डे वन डे फॉर वन सब्जेक्ट वॉट आई डिड एन स्टैंडर्ड बुक्स आई डिड नॉट रीड एन सी आई रेड एन सी आर टी फॉर जोग्राफी सो कई पिन से आई रेड एन सी आर टी फॉर जोग्राफी एंड विद सब्जेक्ट फॉर एंशियंट हिस्ट्री दीज आर द ओनली एन सी आर टीज दैट आई रेफर टू एंड देन मॉडर्न न्यू एन सी आर टी ऑफ मिडीवल इंडिया फ्रॉम क्लास ट्वेल्थ विजयनगर Vijayanagar we have seen a lot of questions being put from Vijayanagar so Vijayanagar and it is not covered in the old ncrts generally it is advised that you do old ncrts for history but i would suggest that this one topic uh, for history you do from a, uh, from new ncrt uh, so yes uh, ncrts if you are particularly weak in a subject i was in geography geography has always been the subject i have dreaded so for geography i picked up ncert because ncert they explain you in a very simple language so but if you think you have quite a base in another subject modern india i was very good so i just picked up spectrum did it polity i did not think polity ke liye to there is no ncert that you need to refer to do not refer to an ncert society ke liye sociology mat padhna sociology ki ncert koi kaam nahi aayegi so geography is one ncert that you can pick ancient india ke liye aur history ke liye kuch ncerts aap pick kar sakte hain but if you think ki ha theek hai isme aap modern india spectrum khud hi itni easy language mein to aap modern india ke ncert kyon padhenge agar aapki standard book easy language mein hai to that you have to identify ye nahi hai ki aapko zabardasti 6 se 12 tak ki ncert karni hai nahi zarurat hai mat karo just 11th class old yeah i have revised all of them <laughs> it it is possible so the questions that i got right i wouldn't uh, go through them i knew that anyhow i i was able to do them so i have a fair knowledge of the same koi zarurat nahi hai dobara dekhne ki the only the questions so i put a put a, a circle on the questions that i got wrong 
so i would see what is it that uh, i uh, why did i get it wrong was it carelessness on my part if it was carelessness on my part good enough i know this concept move forward was it uh, was it because i did not uh, was it because i uh, could not follow any technique in the question uh, for, could not follow any implicit technique in the question which was uh, being implied by the question if that is there then good enough i need to work on my technique part but if i did not know a concept at all then i pick up concept from there and read it understand it so that became a reading material i did not read each and every description that is given at the end only the ones i uh, got wrong and the ones i got wrong because i did not have a knowledge of the concept if there is a new concept which has been introduced that is the only thing that i will read not the entire description kai bar would be ki this point was wrong i marked it right why did i mark it right that is one factual information only one factual information came through what was there okay this uh, at this time there was not the silver coin there was a lead or a copper coin i uh, i thought it was a silver coin so all i need to see is okay during this time it is lead and copper coin nothing more the entire description you don't need to do that all right perfect i did not have a background in international relations back then it came after so i had a background in english literature at that point english there are various factors that go into while you are selecting your optional and that can be very personal to you uh, there would be people who would want ki uh, for uh, for ease purposes they choose an optional which they have already studied in the at the graduation level for me uh, it was different i i am the kind of person who cannot keep on reading the same thing again and again though i was forced to in terms of gs so uh, so when i was already uh, repeating all my preparation again and again i did not want to also repeat my optional so my optional uh, around 70 75% of the syllabus that was similar to what i read at the graduation level and i already had notes prepared for that and everything so um what uh, it was becoming very repetitive same novels pick up the same novels read the same thing so i i got bored i was like okay i need to find a subject which i am interested in which is very new which i have never studied so i was writing i was again i i thought of applying abroad for my masters and for that i was writing a paper so you have to submit a sample essay for the same and that sample essay was on the theme globalization and theater so i was applying for theater studies so globalization and theater i wrote a paper wherein i was introduced to various themes that are all that coincide with anthropology for instance exhibition of various uh, women from some african tribes so all of these things and the ideas of various anthropologists so i was introduced to that i looked that up uh, there there was this session i think which was taken by i i don't remember the name of the scholar who was taking this session uh, online session that i was attending and he mentioned anthropologist uh, franz bols and i was like anthropologist what is anthropologist what is the subject what is this discipline what is this domain i've never heard of anthropology as a distinct subject got intrigued search a little bit okay this is the study of humans it has these four domains then i uh, then i uh, watched a few videos it's okay so <laughs> then i watched a f- uh, few videos by various toppers who took anthropology as their optional i was like okay this is pretty much doable i can do it and it would be a good subject to read plus it is scoring so uh, literature was very subjective even if you write your answers you can never predict how much you are going to get but here the biological or the physical aspect of anthropology and archaeology at least those are the domains wherein if you have written a good enough answer you'll get good enough marks so that's why i decided for anthropology however i was still not sure what i am getting into all i knew was now that i've chosen it i'll go with it. so that's how i ended up choosing it and that's how i ended up going deeper into it and 
uh now i am in love with anthropology i love literature i love anthropology i love international relations yeah uh, he what initial phase mein maine aapko videos batayi hain watch those videos make notes out of them अपने नोट्स को एग्जाम्पल्स uh, से सब्सटैंशिएट करो एग्जाम्पल्स 20 या 25 एग्जाम्पल्स इन टोटल अलग से लिख कर भी रख सकते हैं आप अलग से एक पेपर uh, लीजिए वो जो मिडिल पेज होता है उसको निकालिए उसमें आप 25 एग्जाम्पल्स लिख लीजिए एथिक्स के कहीं पर भी कुछ एथिकल कंडक्ट के बारे में एग्जाम्पल है कुदुम्बश्री प्रोजेक्ट आपने देखा बाई uh, प्रशांत नायर सर वो लिख दिया तो फॉर फॉर द फॉर फॉर वेमेन एम्पावरमेंट वो आपने लिख दिया तो ऐसे आपने पच्चीस एग्जाम्पल्स लिख दिए जब आप uh, बाद में टेस्ट दे रहे हैं उन एग्जाम्पल्स को भी जब रिवाइज कर रहे हैं उन एग्जाम्पल्स को भी रिवाइज कीजिए एंड जहाँ पर आपको लग रहा है कि हाँ मैं ये वाला एग्जाम्पल डाल सकता हूँ वो डाल दीजिए सो इन इफेक्ट यू हैव ओनली डन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव एग्जाम्पल्स बट दे आर दे आर गुड इनफ बिकॉज इन द रियल एग्जाम यू वुड इट वुड बी नीडेड दैट यू यूज एट लीस्ट टेन टू ट्वेल्व एग्जाम्पल्स एंड आउट ऑफ दोज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव एग्जाम्पल्स कहीं ना कहीं तो कोई एग्जाम्पल फिट हो जाएगा ऑल राइट सो नाउ यू हैव थियोरेटिकल नोट्स विद यू यू हैव योर एग्जाम्पल्स विद यू एंड देन केस स्टडी आई हैव टोल्ड यू हाउ टू अप्रोच दैट सो दैट इज द ओनली वे टू डू एथिक्स इन फैक्ट आई यूज टू रिवाइज एथिक्स इन आफ्टर माई प्रिलिम्स आई पिक अप एथिक्स and uh, f- first time note making example writing it took me around 5 to 6 days that i did before prelims and then after prelims i picked that up and i was able to revise it in 1.5 days the initial first revision in 1.5 days because the notes were very concise examples were ready case study to tumhe khud usi time karni hai uh csat paper uh i would be very honest about it i never prepared for it so a uh, non mathematical background i had a non mathematical background but i was not bad at mathematics in fact i was uh one of the good students when it came to maths but so i never uh with maths i am the kind of person who doesn't need formulas so प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस है ठीक है सौ रुपए का इतना लिया होगा तो इतने में पड़ा होगा ये हुआ होगा तो रियल लाइफ सिनारियों में मैं सोच सोच कर करती हूँ तो बट फिर भी कॉम्प्रहेंशन uh, अगर आपका नॉन मैथमेटिकल बैकग्राउंड है तो आपका कॉम्प्रहेंशन वुड बी योर सेवियर बिकॉज आई वॉज टॉकिंग टू अनदर टॉपर लास्ट टाइम आई थिंक अबाउट टेन टू एल्व डेज बिफोर नाउ एंड दिस वॉज इज फिफ्थ अटैम्प्ट दिस वॉज इज फिफ्थ अटैम्प्ट एंड ही टोल्ड मी um uh, he told me that it was in fact uh, air 34 anubhav singh sir we happened to be at the same event somewhere and he told me that for all the five years he has relied entirely on comprehension for uh, csat and has cleared csat every year so i think if you uh, make your comprehension skills strong you would be able to get through aur thoda bahut reasoning kar lo and thode bahut agar aapka non mathematical background hai to aapko lag raha hai ki फार्मूला फार्मूला डायरेक्ट एप्लीकेशन ऑफ फार्मूला कहीं कहीं हो सकता है वो फार्मूले पाँच छः सात कर कर चले जाओ यू वुड बी एबल टू डू इट रफली थर्टी फाइव फोर्टी क्वेश्चन अगर आपने टारगेट कर लिया देन हो जाएगा एफिशिएंसी हाई होनी चाहिए uh your syllabus is the key so uh, for instance there is a news on karamcharis and you know karamcharis will be a part of social issues safai karamcharis so that becomes important uh then there is a news on uh, russia ukraine war it forms part of international relations that becomes important but bahut subjective usme mat jaiye skim through kijiye kahin par aapko ek act ka naam mil gaya use utha lijiye कहीं पर आपको कोई एथिक्स के लिए एग्जाम्पल मिल गया उसे उठा लीजिए लाइन बाय लाइन एडिटोरियल्स पढ़ने की कोई जरूरत नहीं है ऊपर ऊपर से पढ़िए मोनिटाइजेशन पाइपलाइन है सिक्स लाख करोड़ आपको दिख गया उठा लीजिए यू डो नॉट नीड टू नो पता चल गया कि हाँ रफली इस चीज के लिए बनी है ये स्कीम हो गया काम यू डो नॉट नीड टू रीड ईच एंड एवरी अबाउट इट एनी मोर क्वेश्चन कुछ और पूछना है आप लोगों को 
could be anything. I mean, for me, it was lack of practice and provision initially. Uh, strategy we could bahut achhi nahi thi. First attempt diya tha optionally nahi pata tha kya lena hai. Second attempt mein optional choose kiya. To wo bahut sare factors ho sakte hain. Luck bhi ek factor ho sakta hai ki haan apka ek number se reh gaya. To thik hai ek ek extra score bhi to kar sakte the. Ek number se ho bhi to sakta tha. To wo bhi ho jata hai. To bahut sari cheeze hoti hain. कुछ ये होता है कि मेंस में आपका द अदर पर्सन हैज सीन मोर नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चंस ही वाज डूइंग अ सोर्स वेयर एंड मोर नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चंस दैट आर इन द एक्चुअल एग्जाम फीचर्ड एंड बट यू वर डूइंग फ्रॉम अ सोर्स जहां पर ये क्वेश्चंस नहीं आए सो यू वर नॉट एबल टू सी इट सो दैट्स हाउ लक आल्सो पैंस आउट सो अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स मेरे लिए न्यूज़ पेपर वाज कंपलसरी सो आई वुड से मैंने बताया है मैं करंट अफेयर्स के लिए चार सोर्सेस करती थी कोई नहीं करता बट मुझे पता था करंट अफेयर्स मेरी वीकनेस है अगर आपको लगता है करंट अफेयर्स में तो मैं बादशाह हूँ तो छोड़ दो या व्हाट फ्रॉम द He is asking basically, uh, would you prefer current affairs magazines or or newspaper? All right, all right. I would prefer newspapers. Yeah. Current affairs, I would supplement with newspaper. कि कुछ newspaper में छूट गया है तो मैं monthly magazines से उठा लूँ. Weekly magazines तो मैं नहीं देखती थी. Uh, when to start answer writing? Once you have covered your entire syllabus at least once, then you can think about starting answer writing. uh there are no questions in essay that require philosophical approach there are themes that come from there are philosophical themes in essay but the approach would be very practical so if you follow philosophical approach the essay becomes very abstract so for instance you're talking about plato that uh, our idea of a table that wouldn't be very important from the upsc point of view philosophy optional it might help but from the point of view of upsc you have to cover real life issues real life themes so for instance there is uh, um say any question any previous year uh, i am unable to recall search on your phone ask any random philosophical question uh, from essay what man is self conscious all right so you can always begin from you can begin from your uh, uh, philosophical point of view aristotle's theory on man is uh, uh, man is again sorry man is self conscious so you can always begin with your aristotle's viewpoint on man and then talking about the self conscious you can pick up real life examples on the same how various leaders have been self conscious wherein the image became a uh, became an important factor for that so these are the examples you pick up from your history then uh, talking about man is self conscious you can move on to the society aspect of it how self consciousness has led to the creation of an entire social structure so ar radcliffe brown also talks about that so you can or melinowski through his uh, functionalist approach also talks about that then you can go on to the social aspect of that right after that man is self conscious will also feature in your polity domain how uh, uh through the making of constitution how uh, what were the various what were the various uh amendments that dr b r ambedkar wanted in the constitution because uh, right so he was always uh, he was always uh, in the process of review or reform of his own ideas so that is what you can mention there so you you know you can pick up uh, various ir also features man uh, the the orientation of various leaders in the contemporary times world leaders and how would they want to project themselves right so ian hall has written a book on the foreign policy during the modi era and how various decisions that are taken during this time how they are though very controversial but uh, 
how various decisions taken du uh, during this time actually pertain to the self image of the leaders so there is a domain in ir uh, in fact um strategic culture and that has one of the aspects as role of leaders in making of uh, international decisions that could be taken in that so though the theme is very philosophical the answer follows from the syllabus that has been given to you by upsc the the answers would comprise a lot of examples anecdotes uh case studies you can also use self examples you can begin with a story wherein you were self conscious you can always do that so the answer should not be very abstract for instance you are talking in entirely philosophical term yes man is self conscious this is because the mind has been constituted in a certain manner don't write that don't write that use examples that would give a structure to your answer all right okay Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> ha. Hmm. Hmm. Jab jaago tab savera. Theek hai. मॉरल थिंकर्स आपको एथिक्स में पढ़ाए जाएंगे तो बहुत बेसिक लेवल पर ऐसा नहीं है कि उनकी बहुत इन डेप्थ आपको पढ़ाया जाएगा बट एक बेसिक लेवल पर फ्रेमवर्क होगा जो आप एसेज में भी यूज़ कर सकते हैं तो एथिक्स में भी यूज़ हो जाएंगे एसेज में भी यूज़ हो जाएंगे एंड दैट इज़ गुड इनफ पाँच छः सात मॉडर्न फिलासफर्स आपको पढ़ाए मॉरल फिलासफर्स आपको पढ़ाए जाएंगे उसमें आपके uh, यूटिलिटेरियन अप्रोच होगा आपकी अलग अलग अप्रोचेज होंगी विच यू कैन ऑल्सो यूज इन योर एस एज उससे पहले का नहीं पूछ रहा है आपको वन पॉइंट फाइव ईयर्स फॉर इंस्टेंस आप जून में अगर बैठ रहे हैं जून टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर में आप एग्जाम दे रहे हैं तो आपको जनवरी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री से करना है तो वन पॉइंट फाइव ईयर्स का स्पैन आपको कवर करना है बट इसमें शायद ही कोई क्वेश्चन होगा जो अब करंट अफेयर्स में नहीं आ रहा है जो पहले था फॉर इंस्टेंस अगर आपका मणिपुर वॉयलेंस आया है तो ये पहली बार वॉयलेंस नहीं हुआ है नाइनटीन नाइनटी सेवन में भी एक बार वॉयलेंस हुआ था तो वो 1997 वॉयलेंस मेंशन आपके इस वाले करंट अफेयर्स में भी होगा तो आपको लग रहा है कि ये तो पुराने उससे पूछ लिया 1997 का क्यों पूछ रहे हैं बट अभी वॉयलेंस हुआ है 1997 में भी हुआ था तो एक लिंक है राइट right? एकदम से ये नहीं है कि आज से कोई नई चीज ओरिजिनेट हो गई है राइट right? अगर डिस्कवरी हुई है किसी चीज की दैट इज अनदर थिंग बट एकदम से ऐसा नहीं है कि आज रात की रात एक नई करंट इवेंट ओरिजिनेट हो गया एक सिमरिंग पॉइंट हमेशा रहा है राइट right? और अगर ये वाला करंट अफेयर अभी आपको पढ़ाया जा रहा है तो वो सिमरिंग पॉइंट हो सकता है दो ढाई साल पहले हुआ हो तो कुछ लोग बोल देते हैं ये तो ढाई साल पहले का करंट अफेयर है बट आज भी तो कुछ इवेंट हो रहा है उसकी वजह से तो वो सारी चीज़ें आपके कवर हो जाती हैं ब्रॉड थीम्स आपके ऑलमोस्ट सेम ही रहती हैं तो वन पॉइंट फाइव का अगर आप कवर कर लेंगे यू यू आर गुड टू गो एंड उसके बाद एक दो क्वेश्चन अगर आपके पुराने भी पूछिए नहीं आए एक दो छोड़ दो a few things from geography places and news you'll have to mug them up you you will also need to refer to some mnemonics for the same up uh, for instance uh aapka mediterranean sea hai uske aas pass kaun si countries hain ab wo to mug up hi karna padega na how will you be able to associate things from that right to wahi All right. Uh, yeah. Last time मैं सीरियस हुई हूँ पहले दो अटैम्प्ट में होती तो पहले दो अटैम्प्ट में हो जाता पहले दो अटैम्प्ट में सिर्फ करंट अफेयर्स के लिए मंथली मैगजीन फॉलो की थी थर्ड अटैम्प्ट में पता चला नहीं कर रही है काम थर्ड अटैम्प्ट में ये सब किया देखा कि कितना टाइम लगता है आपको 40 मिनट न्यूज़पेपर पढ़ने में लगती है 10 मिनट आपका पोर्टल हो जाता है 
देन यू हैव जो मैंने आपको बताया ट्वेंटी क्वेश्चन आप करते हैं उसमें आपका और पंद्रह मिनट लग जाती है एक घंटा पाँच मिनट हो गया और मंथली आप बाद में पढ़ते हैं तो दिन का एक घंटा पाँच मिनट आप करंट अफेयर्स को दे रहे हैं दे सकते हैं ये भी कह सकते हैं आप <laughs> बिल्कुल कह सकते हैं it's because you haven't covered your syllabus entirely have you done all your papers so do all of them once because ab kya hota hai if you're writing answers for economics sometimes uh, you also need to refer to some other papers for that right you ab aap uh, ab aap uh, polity kar rahe hain to aapko governance se bhi kuch cheeze uthani padengi polity mein right एथिक्स और गवर्नेंस और पॉलिटिक्स बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है एथिक्स में मोस्टली आपको यूज करना पड़ता है काफी एक्ट्स यूज करने पड़ते हैं काफी चीजें यूज करनी पड़ती हैं जो आपके प्रीवियस उसमें हैं तो uh, वो चीजें आप अगर इंटरलिंक करेंगे तो ज्यादा बेटर आंसर्स लिख पाएंगे और इंटरलिंक आप तभी कर पाएंगे जब आप एक बार सारा सिलेबस कर लें तो यू आर स्टार्टिंग इट हर्ल यूर द प्रॉब्लम इज नॉट विद यू हैड आई स्टार्ट इट एट दिस पॉइंट वेर एन आई हैव इन ट्रेड ऑल द सब्जेक्ट आई वुड है सेम प्रॉब्लम so you need to do it after like covering the entire thing what he is asking mistakes upsc journey mein aapke jo mistakes hai aapko lagta hai practice nahi ki revision nahi practice nahi ki maine revision nahi kiya maine overestimate kar li shayad apni capacities ki ha main to kar lungi to वो चीज़ें मिस्टेक्स uh, रही हैं फिर करंट अफेयर्स पर बहुत ज़्यादा ध्यान नहीं दिया स्टैटिक में उलझी रही सोचा कि ठीक है इन पासिंग हो जाएगा मुझे सरफेस नॉलेज तो है कॉन्सेप्ट की इन डेप्थ की क्या ज़रूरत है ठीक है हो जाएगा तो दीज आर सम ऑफ द मिस्टेक्स दैट आई कमिटेड फिर प्रिलिम्स uh, परस्पेक्टिव से ज़्यादा मिस्टेक्स हुई है मेन्स तो एक बार में निकल गया है तो आई वुड से वहाँ पर बहुत ज़्यादा मिस्टेक हुई है बट प्रिलिम्स में प्रैक्टिस को मैंने बहुत अंडर एस्टिमेट किया था आई थॉट कि स्कूल में करते थे कॉलेज में करते थे यू वुड रीड यू वुड ओनली फोकस ऑन रीडिंग ठीक है कौन एग्जाम के प्रैक्टिस कर कर देख रहा है सीधा एग्जाम वाले दिन लिख लेंगे तो दैट्स द सेम अप्रोच दैट आई परस्यूड इन द फर्स्ट अटैम्प्ट फील्ड राइट सो दैट इज दैर प्रैक्टिस इज द की सोर्सेस को लिमिट कीजिए ये नहीं है कि यू आर रीडिंग एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम एवरीवेयर मेरे साथ होता था मैंने यहाँ व्हाट्सएप पर किसी ने कुछ भेज दिया न्यूज़पेपर की बेट मैं उसे पढ़ने लग गई ठीक है मैंने अगर एक न्यूज़पेपर को सब्सक्राइब किया स्टिक टू दैट व्हाई डू आई नीड टू फॉलो ईच एंड एवरी सोर्स ट्विटर पर कुछ देख लिया ओके फॉलो कर लो इसको भी तो डोंट डू दैट डोंट बेसिकली गो एवरीवेयर हैव अ स्ट्रीम लाइन अप्रोच ठीक है बहुत बेसिक कर रहा हूँ बाकी लोग चार किताबें पढ़ रहे हैं बाकी लोग फैंसी कॉन्सेप्ट के बारे में बात कर रहे हैं फैंसी लैंग्वेज में बात कर रहे हैं वो कोई जरूरत नहीं है अपना जो डिसाइड कर लिया है एक वो उसी पर स्टिक रहा हो ठीक है बाकी लोगों को करने दो जो कर रहे हैं राइट दो घंटे अच्छा तो ऊपर से न्यूज स्क्रीन थ्रू कर लो अब आपने न्यूज देखी अच्छा ये है अब ये नहीं है दृष्टि आई है इसने डाला है तो मुझे दस के दस कॉम्प्रेहेंसिवली पूरी पूरी पढ़नी है अब मैंने मुझे दस मिनट लगते थे क्योंकि मैंने पहले न्यूज़पेपर पढ़ा हुआ होता था तो मुझे पता था कि न्यूज़पेपर में जो जो आया है वो तो मुझे नहीं करना है अब इस पोर्टल से अब न्यूज़पेपर में मैंने ये पढ़ लिया ये यहाँ पर कट करो उसको सिलेक्टिव होना पड़ता है उस उसके बाद भी आप सिर्फ ऊपर का टाइटल देखेंगे अगर आपको लग रहा है टाइटल इज सेल्फ एक्सप्लेनेट भी अंदर का नहीं पढ़ेंगे राइट और जैसे मैंने न्यूज़ का बताया स्किम थ्रू करो ये नहीं लाइन बाई लाइन पढ़ रहे हो स्किम थ्रू करो ठीक है कुछ इंपॉर्टेंट चीज़ दिखी क्या और अरे यहाँ पर तो एक फिगर है उसे उठा लिया यहाँ पर एक नाम है ये वाली लाइन पढ़ ली राइट
कुछ और डाउट्स आपके शैलवीर टेस्ट सीरीज फॉर ऑप्शनल और जीएस आई एव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू वंस यू हैव कंप्लीटेड द एंटायर सिलेबस यू कैन थिंक अबाउट इट फॉर मी इट वाज अ लिटिल लेट आई कंप्लीटेड द एंटायर सिलेबस ट्वाइस एंड देन जॉइन द टेस्ट सीरीज राइट सो प्रीलिम्स के बाद तो आपको करनी ही करनी है और ये वाली जो है ये स्टेज वन टेस्ट सीरीज है यहाँ पर आपकी बहुत इंटेंसिव प्रिपरेशन नहीं रहेगी यहाँ पर आप बस देखेंगे आप टाइम में अपना कंप्लीट कर पा रहे हैं आंसर्स पॉइंटर्स में लिख पा रहे हैं डायग्राम्स इनकॉर्पोरेट कर पा रहे हैं क्या स्ट्रेंथ्स हैं क्या वीकनेसेस हैं तो ये बहुत असेसमेंट के लिए होगी तो ये नहीं है कि आपको बहुत सारे टेस्ट कवर करने हैं इसमें तो आप अपने एट योर कम्फर्ट यू कैन जॉइन द टेस्ट सीरीज सो एक बार में भी कर सकते हैं दो बट डू नॉट जॉइन दैम बिफोर यू हैव कम्प्लीटेड द एंटायर सिलेबस एट लीस्ट वंस डू नॉट डू दैट एंड फॉर फॉर प्रिलिम्स आप अभी से लगा सकते हैं इफ यू आर प्लानिंग टू सिट फॉर जून टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर प्रिलिम्स के लिए आप लगा सकते हैं टेस्ट सीरीज ठीक है शैल वी रेपर दो सेशन नाउ ओके इट इज ग्रेट मीटिंग यू गाइज एंड आई होप इट इज हेल्पफुल Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for joining us. ठीक है तो this was our session. अभी तक आपके तीन चार orientation sessions हो चुके हैं, right? For subject specific and uh, this we thought कि आपको एक insight मिलना चाहिए from the topper's mouth from herself. Again, strategies would be different from different toppers. अलग-अलग लोगों से आप बात करेंगे तो few might have referred only one magazine, few might have referred multiple magazines. few might have relied only on newspaper someone might have not read the newspaper at all right so it is up to you you are the uh, best judge of yourself aapko pata hona chahiye ki mujhe kya sabse zyada suit karta hai so if i am a person who is newspaper person jise newspaper padh ke cheeze better samajh mein aati to i should rely on that thing mujhe lagta hai ki nahi yaar mera time newspaper padh ke bahut zyada waste hota hai i am a magazine sort of person jo magazine padh ke bhi wo crux nikal sakta hai the other person who is doing it by reading uh, multiple magazines to hum waise kar sakte hain theek hai so it is entirely up to you ab abhi tak aapke kitne sessions ho chuke hain shuruaat hui thi monday se we did one session on general preparation kaise kaise hum karne wale hain then unfortunately we took a break of it a uske baad fir we did a uh, session on polity and history then humne baat kari indian economy ke bare mein jiske hum sessions already karne wale hain तो वी आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम इंडियन इकोनॉमिक क्लासेस मंडे से ये तो सब कुछ सॉर्टेड है कल एक इंपॉर्टेंट सेशन और रख रहे हैं अब वो सेशन क्या है उसके बारे में समझते हैं वो सेशन सिंपल सा है आंसर राइटिंग स्किल्स कई बार क्या होगा कि आप लोग रनिंग क्लासेस में जब अटेम्प्ट करना शुरू करोगे तो यू माइट वॉन्ट अस टू गाइड यू अगेन एंड अगेन कि सर आज का आंसर मेरा अच्छा नहीं लिखा था वट शुड आई डू टू इम्प्रूव दैट आंसर अपॉन तो कई बार क्या होगा कि जब क्लासेज रनिंग फ्लो में चल रही होंगी ना गिविंग यू टाइम In the classroom itself, for that session specifically, will become a tough task. आप economy के faculty से running classes में चौथे number के lecture पे आप पूछोगे कि sir ये answer कैसे लिखना चाहिए? Please आप एक हमें बता दो. Though he would be able of guiding you, proper हम समझाएंगे. But then it would require a detailed, dedicated session for the answer writing skills itself. जिसमें बहुत सारे terms होते हैं. जैसे uh, elucidate about this particular topic. Now, what do you need to do about that term elucidate? डिफ्रेंशिएट बहुत सारे की टर्म्स हैं जो यूपीएससी लैंग्वेज यूज करती है जार्गन्स यूज करती है जहाँ पे सब्जेक्ट uh, के बारे में अगर स्टैटिक से क्वेश्चन आ रहा है तो हमें किस तरह से स्ट्रक्चर करना चाहिए अगर वो करेंट से आ रहा है तो किस तरह से डिफाइन करें ऐसी बहुत सारी चीज़ें हमको करनी होती है राइट तो वो सारे नुआंसेज जो भी हैं वो हम समझेंगे कल के सेशन में इम्पॉर्टेंट क्यों है वो भी समझिएगा अगर आपने कल का सेशन अटेंड मान लीजिए नहीं किया या फिर हमने बिल्कुल भी आंसर राइटिंग के बारे में हमको आइडिया नहीं है और हम सारे के सारे आंसर्स लिखना शुरू करते हैं तो वो बहुत सारी बेसिक मिस्टेक्स जो हर बच्चा करेगा वो आप हो सकता है पहले सेशन के बाद ना करो तो यू कैन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम एन एच एक थोड़ा सा एच के बाद ही स्टार्ट कर सकते हो अगेन जैसा अभी मैम ने बोला कि एटलीस्ट uh, एक बार सारी चीजें पढ़ लो उसके बाद आंसर राइटिंग स्टार्ट करनी चाहिए तो आप बोलोगे सर ये तो कुछ कॉन्सेप्ट अलग है आप लोग तो कुछ और बोल रहे हो आप लोग बोल रहे हो पहले दिन से आंसर सीखने चाहिए देखो हमारा कॉन्सेप्ट बड़ा सिंपल सा है इवन इफ यू यू आर रीडिंग ए टॉपिक ऑन ए वेरी सेम डे कुछ तो समझ में आता होगा वो जो कुछ भी समझ में आता होगा वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग यू टू रिवाइज दैट थिंग एंड मेकिंग श्योर फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट डे कि आज भी आपको सेम सेम चीज़ों का रिवीजन हो रहा है ये भी हम इंश्योर करा रहे हैं 
वो कराने से फायदा क्या होता है अपने दो बार रिवीजन तो कर दिया एक बार वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग यू टू डू एट योर होम जो मैंने बोला है कि पहले दिन से ही क्लास में करना ही करना है देन सेकेंड आपको मैं क्लासरूम में ही हम शुरुआत के पंद्रह मिनट पर रिवाइज करा रहे हैं फिर आपको दो घंटे के बाद उसी टेस्ट के बेसिस पे उसी नॉलेज के बेस पे एक टेस्ट देना है तो जो आंसर राइटिंग स्किल है जो क्वेश्चन है आप देखोगे तो पहले दिन हम कोई आपसे ऐसा यूपीएससी के लेवल का क्वेश्चन नहीं पूछने वाले हैं वी आर ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी एट योर पेस ऑनली थोड़ा बेसिक से स्टार्ट करेंगे बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर से स्टार्ट करेंगे कि आपको आंसर राइटिंग स्किल से थोड़े थोड़े नुआन से समझ में आना शुरू हो हमारा सिंपल सा लॉजिक बड़ा सिंपल सा है कि इवन इफ यू आर राइटिंग यू आर नॉट पुटिंग एनी एफर्ट आप बस वो सात मिनट आठ मिनट में भी ये जान लगा रहे हो कि मेरा ये आंसर कैसे थोड़ा सा अच्छा हो जाए इवन इफ यू आर डूइंग इट फॉर फोर्टी फिफ्टी डेज योर आंसर राइटिंग स्किल्स विल बी वे बेटर देन डे वन जो आज हैं उससे कहीं ज़्यादा अच्छे होंगे इतना तो मानते हो आप लोग ऐसा हो सकता है कि पहले शुरुआत के क्वेश्चन में टेन मार्क्स का जो क्वेश्चन हो उसमें सिर्फ आपके दो नंबर आए इट इज़ पॉसिबल वेरी मच पॉसिबल बट कैन वी डू दैट कि यार दो आए हैं नेक्स्ट टाइम तीन से कम तो नहीं आने चाहिए कैन वी डू दैट अगर हमारे कॉन्सिस्टेंटली तीन आ रहे हैं तो कैन वी मेक श्योर कि साढ़े तीन तो आने चाहिए इट शुड भी एटलीस्ट थ्री एंड हाफ मार्क्स इट शुड भी एटलीस्ट फोर मार्क्स एटलीस्ट फाइव मार्क्स ऐसे ही तो इम्प्रूवमेंट करना है ना फिर करते करते आपको समझ में आएगा कि यार स्टैटिक से क्वेश्चन अगर मेरा आता है इफ द क्वेश्चन इज हार्ड कोर फ्रॉम स्टैटिक कॉन्सेप्चुअल अंडर स्टैंडिंग आई एम वेरी गुड एट राइटिंग इट बट द मोमेंट इट इज मोर रेलिवेंट टू करेंट अफेयर्स वाला ओरिएंटेशन मेरे पास फैक्ट्स की फैक्ट्स की कमी है मेरे पास नॉलेज कम है मेरे पास जो मॉडल आंसर आ रहा है उसे देख के मुझे पता चला कि अच्छा यार आई कुड नॉट थिंक इन दैट डायरेक्शन एट ऑल कि आंसर ऐसे भी लिखा जा सकता था तो ऐसे जो हंड्रेड इटिरेशन होंगे ना आपके साथ हर वो क्वेश्चन जो आप सोच रहे होगी कि यार ये मैं ऐसे लिख सकता था देन आपको एक डिफरेंट मॉडल आंसर नजर आएगा आपको खुद को लगेगा कि यार दिस क्वेश्चन कुड हैव बीन अप्रोच इन ए डिफरेंट वे ऑल टुगेदर तो आप वो सारी चीजें सीख रहे होगे ऐसे हंड्रेड वेज हंड्रेड फिफ्टी वेज ट्वेंटी टू हंड्रेड वेज जो आप साल भर में करने वाले हो हमारे साथ उससे आपको बहुत सारा नॉलेज इकट्ठा होगा विच यू कैन नॉट डू अगर आपका मन बने कि भाई मैं एक काम करता हूँ कि दिसंबर में सब कुछ खत्म हो गया नाउ आई विल अटेम्प्ट ऑल दो हंड्रेड क्वेश्चन एंड थिंग क्योंकि वही बात है ना हम लोग घर में जैसे पूजा ओजा करते हैं तो हनुमान चालीसा मान लो पढ़ रहे हैं तो वो पढ़ ऐसा रटते थोड़ा ना पहले दिन बैठ करके कि आज ही मेरे को मगब करना है हनुमान चालीसा आप डेली चुकी पढ़ते हो आप कुरान की कुछ आयते डेली पढ़ते हो तो इट गोज इन टू योर माइंड आप उसे डेलीबरेटली याद नहीं कर रहे होते उसी में लड़ दी आंसर लाइटिंग स्किल्स में थिंग्स विच यू विल लर्न ऑन ए डेली बेसिस दैट विल गेट एक्यूमुलेटेड इन टू योर माइंड इन ए डिफरेंट वे सप्टल वे में धीरे धीरे आपके अप्रोच चेंज चेंज होने लगेंगे आपको खुद के इंट्रोडक्शन अच्छा अच्छे लगने शुरू हो जाएंगे राइट right? आपने एक आंसर आज लिखा अगेन <coughs> जैसा मैंने बोला था अप्रोच क्या होना चाहिए अप्रोच बड़ा सिंपल सा है मुझे अगर आप वही क्वेश्चन मुझे दे दोगे तो मैं क्या करूंगा उस क्वेश्चन के साथ यार मेरी नॉलेज कितनी व्हाट ऑल आई नो अबाउट दिस सब्जेक्ट दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक जो भी मुझे क्वेश्चन मिला मैं उसको एक तो तरीका ये है कि ब्लैंड होकर के बिना पेमेंट से लिख दू कि यार चलो ठीक है सात मिनट का काम है लिख करके चले जाते हैं एक तो तरीका ये होगा दूसरा तरीका ये कि वॉट एवर द लिमिटेड नॉलेज आई हैव इन माई माइंड वॉट द लिमिटेड नॉलेज जो भी मेरे पास है उसको कैसे बेस्ट वे में आर्टिकुलेट करके आंसर्स लिख के जाते हैं आप लोग ये तो एग्री करते होगे कि जितनी नॉलेज जो भी मेंस लिख रहे हैं बैठ करके लगभग सभी को उतनी नॉलेज तो होती होगी रैंकर जिस जो 15,000 बच्चे सेलेक्ट होते हैं वो सभी के सभी प्री ऑलमोस्ट सिमिलर बेस ऑफ नॉलेज से सेलेक्ट होते हैं ये तो मानते हो तो डिफरेंस कहाँ आता है डिफरेंस वही आता है कि वो जो तीन घंटे का एग्जाम हो रहा था उसमें किसने कितनी बेहतरीन तरह से मचाया वही है यही डिफरेंस है वो सात मिनट के अंदर आपने कितनी बेहतरीन तरह से सोच पाए कि ये सात मिनट में क्वेश्चन का इंट्रोडक्शन ये होना चाहिए चार पार्ट होंगे तीन फैक्टर्स होंगे लास्ट में कंफ्यूजन करते टाइम मुझे ये चीजें लिख के देनी है ये सब आप तब कर पाओगे तब कर पाओगे वेन यू आर डूइंग रेगुलर प्रैक्टिस ऑफ इन ऑफ इट इन है ना वो जैसे बोलते हैं ना कि इट इज बेटर टू ब्लीड इन प्रैक्टिस रादर देन इन वॉर इट आप सोल्जर हो तो आपको जो भी प्रैक्टिस करनी वो ये जो मैचेस uh, के पहले इतनी सारी नेट प्रैक्टिस होती है बहुत सारे सिक्सर्स मारते हैं क्यों मारते हैं सो so दैट एक वो वन शॉट जो मेरे मेरे एरिया में गिरने वाला है वो अगर वहां पे आके गिरेगा तो वी कैन प्ले इट अलॉन्ग राइट सिमिलरली मेंस के क्वेश्चन में भी ऐसा ही होने वाला है बीस क्वेश्चन अगर आने वाले हैं तो देर वुड कुछ कम क्वेश्चन जो एकदम आपके डोमेन में होंगे डोमेन से मतलब क्वेश्चन देखते ही आपको समझ में आएगा अच्छा इसका इंट्रोडक्शन ये होगा ये डायमेंशन है उस डायमेंशन में तीन तीन पॉइंट ये ल
कौन सा मेरे लेवल का है पहले उसमें सबसे ज्यादा मार्क्स अटेम्प्ट करने देन देर विल कम ए क्वेश्चन जिसमें आपको थोड़ी बहुत नॉलेज होगी आपको उसमें कैसे करना है आपको उसमें जितनी नॉलेज है उतनी नॉलेज के बेसिस पे देन फिर आपके आंसर राइटिंग स्किल्स दिखाने हैं कि किस तरह से कुछ डायग्राम बना दिए किस तरह से कुछ फ्लो चार्ट बना दिए किस तरह से जो मेरी एकदम ब्लैंड नॉलेज थी जो मुझे पता है बहुत अच्छी नहीं है बट कैन आई इम्प्रूव अपॉन दैट थिंग कैन आई डू समथिंग अबाउट इट कि थोड़ा सा इंप्रूव करके वो जो क्वेश्चन में तीन मार्क्स आने वाले थे मेरे मैं उसको चार बना लूँ ये कर सकते हैं ये कर लिया लास्ट क्वेश्चन वो होंगे जिसके बारे में बिल्कुल आइडिया नहीं है ब्लैंक हो आप, आपको पता ही नहीं कि अब इसमें करना क्या है बट आपको तो पता होगा बहुत सारे एग्जाम्स आप क्वालिफाई करके आए हो आपको पता है कि अगर कॉपी भर के भी आए हो तो कुछ मार्क्स मिलेंगे तो नाउ डूइंग दैट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर दोज क्वेश्चन कि कुछ तो रेलिवेंट लिख के आओ कि जिस क्वेश्चन में मुझे दो मार्क्स भी नहीं मिलने वाले थे वहां वो मुझे किसी तरह तीन मार्क्स दे दे यही पॉसिबल है क्या आपको लगता है कि बीस के बीस क्वेश्चन एकदम आपके डोमेन के गिरने वाले हैं आकर के आप कितनी भी प्रिपरेशन कर लो दो साल पांच साल दस साल कर लो तो भी वो बीस क्वेश्चन सारे के सारे आपके अकॉर्डिंग नहीं आने वाले एग्जाम में तो वो प्रैक्टिस हमें यहां करनी है वो प्रैक्टिस हमें यहां करनी है ये तो हो गई आंसर राइटिंग की बात तो कल का जो पूरा सेशन है दैट इज गोना डिपेंडेंट दैट इज गोना बेस्ड ऑन योर आंसर राइटिंग स्किल्स क्या क्या बेसिक चीजें वो सब करते हैं उसके बाद ऑब्जेक्टिव टाइप के क्वेश्चन के लिए भी कुछ बात कर लेते हैं एक तो ये कि देखो मेरा अप्रोच क्या होगा या किसी का भी अप्रोच क्या होता है जब आप तैयारी करके कोई पेपर देने जाते हो तो दो तरीके होते हैं एक तो ये कि आपका एक्चुअल पेपर है या मॉक पेपर है इस पे डिपेंड करता है कि आपका साइकी कैसा है जब एक्चुअल पेपर देने बैठ रहे होते हो आप तो यू विल डू एवरीथिंग टू सॉल्व दैट क्वेश्चन ऐसा होता है बट जब आप मॉक कर रहे होगे तो आपके दिमाग में क्या होगा मॉक ही तो है नहीं आ रहा है कोई बात नहीं यही होता है प्रॉब्लम कहाँ आएगी अगेन फिर से अब दोबारा से जाइए फिल्म्स का जो इस बार का पेपर है रफी सभी ने देखा हुआ है क्या आपको लगता है कि वो सारे के सारे क्वेश्चन किसी एक स्टैंडर्ड सोर्स से आए हैं किसी एक बुक से आए हैं ऐसा कुछ तो हुआ नहीं है ना और ऐसा हमेशा होता रहेगा 16 वाले 16 में जब किसी ने एग्जाम दिया था तो उसे वो वाला पेपर टफ लग रहा था जिसने 22 में दिया है उसे वो टिप पेपर टफ लग रहा है जो थर्टी में देगा उसे वो पेपर टफ लगेगा और सब बोलते जाएंगे कि पेपर टफ होता जा रहा है पहले बहुत ईजी था चूँकि मुझे इस साल एग्जाम देना है तो मुझे पीछे वालों का पेपर ईजी लग रहा है सीधी सी बात है डिफरेंस क्या है डिफरेंस ये है कि वो जो क्वेश्चन है वो हम सॉल्व कैसे कर रहे हैं तो एक तो तरीका ये कि मैंने बहुत पढ़ाई करी बहुत पढ़ाई करी और जाकर के बस उसे रिप्लीकेट करने की कोशिश कर रहा हूँ कि क्या एग्जामिनेशन हॉल में ठीक वही आएगा जो मैंने पढ़ा आज जो मैं पढ़ के गया कि अच्छा ये सारी इंडेंजर्ड स्पीशीज की लिस्ट है आई की लेटेस्ट लिस्ट आई है मैंने याद कर ली बैठ करके मैंने उसको मगअप कर दिया पेपर में मुझे क्वेश्चन नहीं आया वहाँ से तो मैं क्या करूँगा तो मैं परेशान हूँ कि होगा कि नहीं होगा कैसे होगा क्योंकि वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग कि जो मैं पढ़ रहा हूँ ठीक वहाँ से पेपर आ जाए प्लीज़ अंडरस्टैंड इट इज़ नेवर गो ना हैपन इसको तो लिख लो अपने दिमाग में कि जो आप पढ़ के जा रहे हो ठीक वहां से क्वेश्चन नहीं आने वाला आप बोल रहे हो सर क्या बात कर रहे हो मैं पूरे साल की पढ़ाई इसी भरोसे करने आया हूँ कि सब कुछ पढ़ेंगे और उसकी हेल्प से पेपर क्वालिफाई होगा दो अलग अलग चीज़ें वन थिंग इज गैदरिंग नॉलेज एंड अदर थिंग इज एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द सेम इन द एग्जामिनेशन हॉल ये एकदम डिफरेंट चीज़ें हैं मुझे हो सकता है फंडामेंटल राइट right जितना बेहतरीन मुझे आता हो उतना शायद किसी को ना आता हो पूरा चैप्टर बट इट माइट हैपन कि मैं एग्जाम में क्वेश्चन सॉल्व नहीं कर पा रहा उससे हो सकता है क्या ठीक है तो हमें क्या करना है यहाँ पे एक चीज समझिएगा प्लीज साइकोलॉजिकली एक चीज समझिएगा कि जब आप एग्जामिनेशन हॉल में बैठे हो तो एक तो तरीका ये कि क्वेश्चन को देखते ही आपने अपने माइंड में गिव अप कर दिया कि ये टॉपिक मुझे नहीं आता या दिस इज नॉट माय एरिया लेट इट गो ये तो मुझसे नहीं होगा और दिमाग में कैसे आता है कि ये वाला टॉपिक अब मैं घर जाकर के बहुत अच्छे से पढ़ूंगा और नेक्स्ट टाइम जब इस टॉपिक से क्वेश्चन आएगा तो मैं तो एकदम क्लीन बोर्ड करने वाला क्वेश्चन यही होता है दिमाग में वो कभी होगा नहीं तो आपको कैसे करना है आपको ऐसे करना है कि जो दस क्वेश्चन ऑब्जेक्टिव टाइप्स के भी मिल रहे हैं ना उसमें भी तीन चार पांच तो आपके एरिया के होंगे उसमें जहाँ आप श्योर हो लीजिए कि ये वो एरिया थे जहाँ पे आई वॉज श्योर कि यार ये क्वेश्चन तो सही होने ही चाहिए उसमें आपने टिक कर दिया घर जा करके वेरीफाई करिए कि वैसे कितने क्वेश्चन हैं जो गलत हुए अगर वैसे क्वेश्चन गलत हो रहे हैं तो दैट मीन्स कि यू शुड नॉट हैव दैट मच कॉन्फिडेंस ऑन योर बेसिक नॉलेज ऑल्सो यू शुड क्रॉस क्वेश्चन यूल सर क्या बेसिक नॉलेज भी ठीक है क्या क्योंकि कुछ क्वेश्चन तो आप बेसिक नॉलेज के बेसिस पे अटेम्प्ट करने वाले हो एग्जामिनेशन हॉल में और ये रेशियो 30 परसेंट रहेगा यूपीएससी में भी 30 परसेंट क्वेश्चन ऐसे होंगे जहां आपकी एग्जैक्ट बेसिक नॉलेज जज होने वाली है तो वो क्वेश्चन लगभग हर
देर वुड ऑल्सो अभी शुरुआत है तो बहुत आसान क्वेश्चन देंगे बट देर वुड ऑल्सो कम ए टाइम जब आपको तीन चार क्वेश्चन ऐसे भी हो सकता है मिले जिसके बारे में आपको बिल्कुल आइडिया नहीं है तो उसमें ये कॉल लेना कि ये मुझे छोड़ना है या मुझे अटेम्प्ट करना है ये सब कब सीखोगे आप ये सब अभी सीखोगे राइट एट द सेम टाइम देर वुड कम देर वुड कम सर्टन सॉर्ट ऑफ क्वेश्चन जहाँ पे एक ऑप्शन आपको क्लियर होगा दो ऑप्शन में कंफ्यूजन होगा उसमें आपको अपना इंट्यूशन चेक करना है उसमें आपको अपना इंटेलिजेंट गेस्ट चेक करना है ये सब आप कहाँ करने वाले हो ये सब आप करने वाले हो यहाँ राइट तो बाई द एंड ऑफ द ईयर आपको ये बहुत अच्छे से पता होगा अगर आपने सारे के सारे क्वेश्चन और सारे के सारे टेस्ट प्रॉपरली दिए तो हम भी इसका प्रॉपर एनालिटिक्स रखने वाले हैं तो उसमें आपको प्रॉपरली ये पता होगा कि यार मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री इज माई फोटे वहां पे अगर मैं इंट्यूशन के साथ भी क्वेश्चन लगाता हूँ ना तो इवन इफ आई एम नॉट श्योर ऑफ माई बेसिक नॉलेज देन ऑल्सो माई क्वेश्चन गेट्स ऑलवेज करेक्टेड देन इन्वायरमेंट एंड इकोलॉजी इज समथिंग वेर आई एम वेरी बैड मेरा इंट्यूशन कहीं भी अप्लाई नहीं होता एंड दिस इज गॉट नथिंग टू डू विद द बुक यू आर रीडिंग नहीं बिल्कुल नहीं आपकी अंडरस्टैंडिंग आपका इंट्यूशन किसी सब्जेक्ट के लिए बहुत अच्छा हो सकता है ये कैटेगरी कौन सीखेगा कब सीखेगा ये ये कैटेगरीज आप सीखोगे यहाँ पे ठीक है बहुत सारे बच्चे क्या करते हैं पूरे साल के पेपर्स करने के बाद सब कुछ पढ़ने के बाद ये सारी चीजें शुरू करते हैं इन द मंथ ऑफ फेब मार्च अप्रैल और कई सारे कोचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट के टेस्ट सीरीज वगैरह ला करके सॉल्व करेंगे बट दैट वॉज नॉट द टाइम दैट इज नॉट द टाइम जब आप बैठ करके एनालिसिस कर पाओ प्रॉपरली कि मेरा करेंट स्ट्रॉन्ग है मेरा स्टैटिक uh, स्ट्रॉन्ग है मेरा ये सब्जेक्ट स्ट्रॉन्ग है वो सब्जेक्ट वीक है ये सब करने का टाइम आपको अभी से मिल रहा है ठीक है तो इट इज माई हम्बल रिक्वेस्ट टू टेक ऑल दो टेस्ट एज सीरियसली एज पॉसिबल जितना इन क्लासेस को सीरियसली ले रहे हो उससे थोड़ा सा ज्यादा उन टेस्ट को सीरियसली ले लो आपको बहुत इंप्रूवमेंट नजर आएगा ठीक है तो दिस वाज ऑल अबाउट कल वाला सेशन कल के सेशन के बाद परसों आपको एक ब्रेक मिलेगा वो ब्रेक इसलिए दे रहे हैं क्योंकि फिर आपको कई कई महीनों तक हो सकता है ब्रेक ना मिले ठीक है उसके बाद आपकी इंडियन इकोनॉमी की क्लासेस स्टार्ट होंगी एंड मंडे uh, से वो इंडियन इकोनॉमी की क्लासेस करेंगे आपके मेंटर्स भी अवेलेबल हैं uh, दुष्यंत uh, और बाकी लोग एक बार आ जाइए आप लोग ज्योग्राफी कैसे अच्छा ज्योग्राफी का सेशन अभी इस बीच में नहीं करा पाए हम बट विल ट्राई कि अगर संडे वगैरह में कभी टाइम मिलता है कर सके ठीक है तो आपका नाम सर अनु दुष्यंत एंड अनुप आपके मेंटर्स हैं ही बी देयर हमेशा हर क्लासेस के बाद आप लोग अभी भी इनसे कुछ बातें वगैरह करना चाहते हैं आपके कोर्सेज के बारे में किस तरह से चीजें कंडक्ट होंगी यू कैन टॉक टू देम अबाउट इट Uh, कल के सेशन की एक्सपेक्टेशन मैंने सेट कर दी है इट इज गोना बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेशन पूरे साल के लिए आंसर राइटिंग का है तो आई वुड एक्सपेक्ट यू गाइस टू कम परसों आपका एक ब्रेक होगा मंडे से आपकी प्रॉपरली इंडियन इकोनॉमी की क्लासेस स्टार्ट होगी ठीक है थैंक यू